now with Grammy winner, Grammy winner, Tasha Cobbs Leonard, her album Heart, Passion, Pursuit, best-selling gospel album of 2017. Your, your sound check just stopped uh -oh. everybody <laughs> early this morning. What is it you think about? It's been number one for mm -hmm. many weeks. What is it about this song, this music? You know, it, it introduces God to people in, 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 in a situation that they may have thought they were alone and mm -hmm. that they may have thought they couldn't get out of. But this song says, I'm getting ready to see something mm -hmm. I've never seen. No matter what this situation looks like, God is about to blow my mind. Nicki Minaj, you collaborated with her yes. on that. And tell people how you got to know each other. You know what, through social media. Mm -hmm. Social media is absolutely amazing. And you know, God is connecting people through social, social media. And one day she just reached out to me and she told me how much that my ministry had blessed her life. Uh -huh. And then she did a tweet to 90 million <laughs> followers saying, Tasha, when you get ready, send me send me that album, I'm, an album and I'm going to do 16 bars on a song for you. And here you have it. And then she, yeah, yeah. she did that. And I know now... Praise God, brothers and sisters in Christ. Praise God. Welcome back. My name is Larry Gilkey. I'm the author of the book, Convicted, A True Story of My Life After Death. And this channel is designed to expose the kingdom of darkness, as well as give the body of Christ knowledge. And because the word tells us my people perish for lack of knowledge. And we need knowledge in order to stand against the enemy, not only to stand against the enemy, but to go on the offense against the enemy. And so what I'm doing today is just, I'm going straight from the spirit straight up let the holy spirit move god matter of fact let's say a prayer before we even get into this father just bless this message to go forth unhindered unchecked by any outside force holy spirit let it be all of you none of me have your way reach the minds reach the 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 the, the spirits of the people who's watching this video to open their eyes let their eyes be open to the enemy's devices and his tactics against your church. Father, we give you all praise, all honor, and all glory, and we call it all done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Okay, let's just go. So, judging from the title, you already know, um, there has been an attack on gospel artists, on gospel music as a whole, and many people don't know it they don't see it they don't recognize it even some of the artists they don't know it they get caught up in um uh the enemy's devices and tactics that he uses against the gospel music and before i get started going into this the way i know these things especially this right here is once again we going remember i told you i was going to go through this the woman erica mccusey's book and kind of highlight some of the things that she talk about. Well, just so happened, one of the things that she talk about is how Satan, when she was a part of the kingdom of darkness, how they used to launch attacks against gospel artists. And the reason they used to launch attacks against the gospel artists are because the music that some of our gospel artists, they put out, they are worshiping the Lord in truth. And it brings that mute, that music brings his presence into wherever that music is being played at. And Satan hates that. As a matter of fact, let's just read. I'm just going to read some of her book pertaining to that subject. Read what she says. Now, I'm going to read this straight from my screen. Now I'm working off two screens and I got to get used to looking at one, looking at the other and looking at the camera. So work with me. If I'm looking like I'm lost, hey, don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit got us. We're going to do this. Praise God. So let's just read. I'm just going to read. It says, this is chapter seven. It says how Satan infiltrates the gospel music. And she goes on to say, there's a screen. And this is straight from her book. I'm reading this straight from her book. Okay. I don't got no copyrights to this. This is straight from her book, but her book is for edification for the body of Christ. So this reading, this is like reading a school text that you go to school to read. This is what you read. This is what we read, man. I'm telling you, man, this stuff is powerful. Praise God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Mm. It says there's a screen in hell, which looks like a large cinematic TV screen where they project gospel artists as they spy on their lifestyles and lay strategies against them. 
The fallen cherub, Lucifer, was a worshiper and he hates to see people worshiping God in song. The, he hates to see people worshiping God in song. The worshipers have taken Lucifer's place in heaven and he feels jealous when he sees them worshiping. Also, worshipers who are prayerful and live right bring God's presence into the church. Their music brings God's presence into people's homes, workplaces, and cars. This affects the devil's kingdom and his demons. They hate worship and can't stand it. Just like the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, 14 through 23, whenever an evil spirit came upon Saul, David would play the harp and evil spirit would, and the evil spirit would leave Saul alone because David was anointed and righteous. The devil also wants everyone to worship him instead of God and use their talents for his kingdom. That's powerful just right there, body of Christ. That's powerful right there. Listen, let me check this out. So now if this worship music by these artists, it, 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 it affects the devil's kingdom in such a way that he hates it and it disrupts his kingdom in such a way. That's, that's a strategy right there for offense. Right there is a strategy for offense. Right there is letting you know, she's telling you, she's straight telling you from the kingdom of darkness, from Satan's mouth himself, she was there. She's telling you gospel music that, 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 that's coming from worshipers that's prayerful and in right and, and, and living right ushers in God's presence. That means that can usher it into your home, usher it into your car. That means you can saturate an atmosphere with God's presence just through music. That's a strategy. That's an offense that we need to be using as the body of Christ. This woman gives a lot of good strategies and a lot of good off for a good um, um, things for us to go on the offense against Satan's kingdom. You see, a lot of times we play in the defense. Man, we gotta stop playing the defense so much. We playing the defense, we need to be playing offense. We need to be attacking. We need to be going in taking territory. We need to be going in taking souls back. We need to be going in and taking the things that he has taken from our lives back. That's why I'm so passionate from this. He took so much from me and I'm not blaming him for doing it. I have free will. I did it to myself. And a lot of us are doing it to ourselves because we don't know. We don't understand the strategies and tactics of the kingdom of darkness, our enemy. Praise God. I'm sorry. This is, this is how, I, matter of fact, no, I ain't sorry. I'm not sorry at all. This is about that. I'm about that. I was about that when I was in that other lifestyle, when I was out there uh, uh, doing all the dirt and, and, and banging and doing whatever I was doing. So I'm going to be about that in this lifestyle. Matter of fact, I'm going to be about that in the kingdom of God. I'm going to go after the enemy. Like I, like, like I went after people when I was out there, man. I ain't sorry. I'm not sorry at all. This is war. You understand? The enemy don't care nothing about us. He, there is no, 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 uh, um, love in his camp. There is no, um, off limits. He goes after our children. He goes after our houses. He goes after our, to seek and destroy our marriages, our families. Come on, man. They're, he don't care. So why should we sit back and just allow him to do these things without going on the offense? Praise God. Okay, let's go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. So it says the devil will call us to meetings with secular musicians now, this is her saying the devil will call her and other secular musicians in his kingdom to, to, to lay strategies against gospel musicians. He would create what would look like opportunities for them to earn money, but they were traps. One way would be attacking their finances if they were not wise, prayerful. He would suffocate the market, their market marketing campaign by promoting other artists events with bigger budgets so, to, so as to discourage them. He would also send agents to their concerts to discourage people from attending and supporting them. Several times we will be sent to work against one of the top gospel artists in U Uganda. And after that, she just goes on to talk about one of the top artists that was in Uganda at that time and how they would um, plot against her and go against her with different things. To make a long story short, it didn't work out, but 
that that's what they would do. Um, let's 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 move on to some of the other. Okay, it says. I'm gonna re- I'm gonna start reading right here. It says the devil would cause secular artists to draw a big crowd and gain fame and a lot of money in a short amount of time. He would give wealth. He would give wealth to gospel artists who accepted invitations to perform with secular artists. The aim was to make this lady, the real gospel artist, look at those people and admire them and desire to be with them and compromise and give in to our efforts, which was uh, Erica and them efforts um, to give in to our offers. By the time they prayed for me, this is Erica talking. She says, by the time they prayed for me, we had tried and try her and fail. Now we, we invited her several times to receive rewards, but she always turned them down. Now this was the gospel artist in Uganda that she's talking about that they had tried and failed and they, they, they made these opportunities. But however, let's look at this. Let's look at this right here. Let's go back. It says Satan, he would give wealth to gospel artists who accepted Invitations to perform with secular artists. Come on, man. Think about this. When I first read this, when I very first read this, the first thing the Holy Spirit brought to my mind was a song that I had heard by one of the one of the the, the top gospel artists who I love her music. And it's Tasha Cobb. She did a song with Nicki Minaj some a long time ago. I don't know how long ago it was. I had to look up the information. But the Holy Spirit brought that to my my remembrance. And I, you know, I had just been uh searching through things some time ago and just came across it out the blue with her Tasha Cobb and Nicki Minaj. I'm like, what? And at that time, see, at that time when I heard that, when I saw that, my eyes wasn't open. I didn't understand the way I understand the kingdom of darkness right now. I didn't understand about the things of the spirit the way I did at that time. So when I first heard it, I was like, you know, oh, that's okay. That's good. I was like, okay. So basically she was trying, Tasha Cobb was trying to, um, you know, bring Nicki Minaj and trying to save her. Or, um, I said, you know, um, that gives that, 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 that creates a, um, an avenue for, uh, younger people to accept Tasha Cobb you know, as, as a, a gospel artist and maybe listen to gospel music. These are the things that I, I was saying. And these are the things that was, um, that made sense to me with her doing that. However, praise God in heaven. When I read this, the Holy Spirit brought it back to my remembrance. He said, you know, that's what happened with Tasha Cobb. And I said, whoa, whoa. You know, when, when the Holy Spirit reveals light like this to you, sometimes it's kind of hard to accept. And that's why you have to be have a childlike mentality when you, when you start to begin to ask God to reveal the truth to you. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's going to put the truth out. He's going to reveal the truth of the way things really are. And most times the way things look, that you've been seeing them are not the way they really are. And that's what it, it is telling you right here, how the enemy and Satan attacks our gospel artists. All right. That's it's, it's, it's telling you, man. So anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, it says the aim was to make this lady, the real, the real artist look up, look at these people and admire them and desire to be with them and compromise and give and give it, and give in to our offers. All right. It also says we would also organize awards from hell sponsored by alcoholic beverage companies and other worldly companies, which engage in practices, which are contrary to Bible teaching. We would stage the award events and place in a place, which is dedicated to dark forces like nightclubs and ain't nightclubs the aim was always to get these gospel artists to come and lose their zeal for righteousness by being in ungodly environments for extended periods of time then we could trap these musicians souls and make them satanists we hated seeing christian music becoming popular and building a big fan base 
we would make sure we enticed the most popular gospel artists to come and perform at our concerts. If they had fans who were saved, they would advertise in the media that they would be at our events. They would either come or at least conclude that it was okay for them to visit such places. And if we would fail to track the artists, at least we would persuade several Christians to attend. Don't just follow people because of their fame and success. Follow the Lord. The devil is willing to give anything for a Christian soul to see it that he never makes heaven. We used to have big meetings chaired by Lucifer to lay strategies of trapping top gospel artists who were giving us a hard time. One time we organized a continental reward, I mean award, and staged it in South Africa and invited artists from across the continent. But the devil worshipers arranged it and arranged it in an effort to invite this gospel artist to make him the winner. The aim was to trap him and destroy his ministry. When he joined the competition, he won and was very excited. Then he innocently invited two Ugandan secular artists who little did he know were top devil worshipers to receive the reward with him as a gesture to his, to his fellow countrymen. One of them came dressed in a gown, which was a replica of Lucifer's and, embar and embraced him. And the other artists picked him up and carried him and dedicated him to Lucifer. To the untrained eye, it looked like a normal way of congratulating him. That gospel artist had no idea that his soul was being captured. When he returned to Uganda, he was a changed man because something terrible had happened to him spiritually. Today, he has lost his marriage and ministry and is now out of the country, all because he sought the accolades that come from men instead of the accolades which come from God. Come on, man. That was a mouthful right there. But let me just go back. Now, look. Do you see how Satan attacks our artists? Now, let's just think about this. Let's think about this. Let's think about Snoop Dogg. Let's think about how he came on the scene and made a gospel mu uh, gospel album and everybody just went crazy. Oh, Snoop Dogg, he's making a gospel album and he's he's celebrating Jesus and, and, and this and that and pastors was just Trump going to him and, and, um, he made, uh, uh, videos and not videos, but he made, uh, he was at gospel awards and he, he, he sung with a lot of our top gospel artists, you know, who come on, man, they had no idea. And I'm convinced because all you got to, I'm convinced that Snoop Dogg was working for Satan and working for the enemy during that time when he was making those things, when he was doing that, he was bringing those artists down. He was bringing down the validity of those artists. He was, he was, you know, uh, uh what Erica talked about, what he was, he was, they was trapping these artists, all these artists, these gospel artists, man, they was trapping them when Snoop did that. Now, the reason why I say that is because look at his fruits, man. God said, look at their fruits. When I thought certain people like, oh, I hate to say this name, but I'm going to say it. I don't care because this is exposing darkness. When I thought like Tyler Perry, I thought he was an upstanding guy. And I thought that, you know, his, his, his the stuff that he was doing for the community and, and just, you know, the way he talk about God and talk about, um, God has a plan for your life and, and all these things. And he's preached a good sermon and this and that and God said, no, 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 no. Look at his fruits. God said, look at his fruits. He said, you can tell a man by their fruits or a woman by their fruits. He said, their fruits are going, to uh, are going to expose everything. It's the fruits. He said, look at the type of movies that he made. Look at the type of uh, um, content that comes from his camp. Look at the fact that it's a woman as far as him and Medea. And you say, I mean, you probably look at it and say, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with that? No. 
Oh, man, y'all got to look in the spirit. Y'all got to look at what that represents. Y'all got to look at who Medea is and what she's saying and how she, he, she displays the content that she displays. It's not building Christ. It's not building the kingdom of God. The, the movies, the things that he make is not representing the kingdom of God. It's not building the kingdom of God. The fruits, you got to look at the fruits. The fruits display it all. It's only two kingdoms that operate in this world. Two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness, in the kingdom of God. That's it. There's no in between. Something is, whatever it is, is going to fall into one of those two kingdoms. Now, look, let's look at Snoop Dogg. Look at where he's at now. Look at what he's done since the gospel album. Everything he done is back to darkness. It's like it never even happened. And people don't even, it's like it, it, people don't even look at that no more. Oh, that is a ploy of the enemy. The enemy wants you to think that it's okay to live how you want to live recklessly, but yet you praise God. You say, oh, I know Jesus. You I have a relationship with Jesus when all the while you don't. And this, and that's where we come in where Jesus say, you know, many will come and they will say, did not cast out demons in your name. Did not do this in your name. And he'll be like, I, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because you don't have a relationship. This thing is deeper than just going to church on Sunday, man. This thing is a lifestyle, man. We have to live this. We have to eat this. We have to sleep this because there's a fight for humanity. What do you think with the presidential election? They talking about um, there's a fight, you know, it's for the soul of the nation, man. They not playing with that, man. They for real about that, man. Your soul is at stake, man. You know, your soul is what houses your, your intellect, your, your mind, your thinking, they want your soul, they want your mind, they want your thinking to be based on the things of the world and not that of Christ. <sighs> Praise God. So, the whole Snoop Dogg thing, man, that went on. Now, I I, I happened, I saw that thing with, with um, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Kirk Franklin and Lil Baby. Now, on the surface, you say, man, that's good, man, that's okay, yeah, look at that. Oh, man, no. That is a wrong representation of how the kingdom of God is supposed to conduct itself. We have no fruitfulness with darkness. We have, there's no place for light and darkness to dwell, okay? You can't mix those two and think that it's okay. You cannot. Now, you say that, well, well, Kirk Franklin was just trying to help the little baby. Maybe he was preaching the gospel to him. Brothers and sisters, the woman just told you what the what the strategies of the devil is. She just told you. See, we have to have discernment as the church. We have to learn to become this have discernment of the way the the enemy operates. Excuse me. We need discernment because we will be able to discern these things. Now, it, what that does is. That brings about how they want to have this new world order with new world religion, one religion. See, that that religion that they want is a religion based on, hey, you know, we can all worship the same. We all worshiping the same God. We all, um, um, everybody's uh, on the same path, coexist. All the religions coexist because we worship the same God. That's not true. It's not true. It's not true. They're worshiping Satan. Okay. If they're not worshiping Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I don't care what it is. If it's not worshiping Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one and only true Messiah, it's worshiping Satan. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. God is not playing with the with the halfway in, halfway out. It's that's that the, these are the last days. That's over with. That's over with. That's over with. The things that's coming, man, it's over. No in between. Now, gives me the Kanye West, man. 